live and the recording has a lot going on. Okay. 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 Good evening, everyone. This is the August meeting of the West Rockfield Township Supervisors. Uh, if everybody please stand, first part is Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, we have a bit of a sound problem since there is no mic at the podium. So, in order to be heard, you're going to have to come over here and either grab the mic in front of Greg or grab the mic in front of our engineer, Mr. Bella, uh, so that you're heard when this is recorded and then be able to be heard or be, able, when you, be heard when it's played back. Uh, we had an exec executive session July 24th. Hold it first. Is there any public comment? I'm oh, sorry. Public comment, uh, which is. Uh, we've gone through this a couple times with public comment. If anybody has any issues which they think we should be paying attention to, please bring it forward now so that when it comes up later on, we will have public comment at the end. But if there's anything that everybody's uh, concerned that we should be dealing with and talking about, then please let us know now. Or if you have anything else on any of the uh, scheduled points on the agenda. Going once. Anybody going twice? Okay. Sorry. Now we get to it. We had an executive session on July 24th uh, dealing with real estate. And we're going to have an executive session after this dealing with personnel, real estate, and legal matters. We get to the consent agenda. Meeting minutes, plan, and I'll let Greg take over. Uh, on the consent agenda is the July 17th, uh, 2024 minutes, the wind plot plan review, the actions for plans to expire, the emergency services report, building and zoning, public works report, planning commission report, conservation committee report, and the treasurer's report, which I will read for July 31st. The general fund, $1,479,789.49. Highway aid, $227,731.89. Open space one million four hundred ninety dollars, one hundred forty thousand, uh, one million four hundred ninety thousand two hundred fifty nine dollars and eighty two cents. The park fund ninety nine thousand six hundred fourteen dollars and sixteen cents. The equipment fund thirty three thousand seventy six dollars and eighty four cents. Highway capital one hundred and forty one ninety six. Street light forty thousand six hundred eighty three dollars and twenty nine cents. General fund reserve. $496,184.72. The American Rescue Plan Fund, $530,656.05. Open Space Manderfield, $41,646.58. The Sewage Maintenance Fund, $211,164.89. Stormwater Fund, $7,668.09. And the escrow funds two million five hundred and twenty three thousand two hundred ninety two dollars and seventy cents. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next part of business is we have our confirmed appointments. Brenda Phelan, West Rock Hill Historical Society. Now I'm going to go to the podium because I believe everybody will be able to hear me. Yeah, we have a microphone. You, you, you won't hold, oh, excuse me. You will not be able to, they won't be able to hear it at home when it's played back. That's the reason why. Just just use Steve's there, okay? Yep. So just sit right here? You may, yes. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay, do I need to tell you when to flip? Yeah, you tell me when, go next slide or say next slide or okay. whatever. Um, I'm Brenda Phelan, president of the West Rock Hill Historical Society. Um, first, I want to thank the Board of Supervisors for the time allowing me to speak this evening. You can switch the slide. A few years ago in a neighboring township, an ab uh, abandoned 100 plus year old farmhouse and barn stood proudly. Over time, we witnessed the property deteriorate. A few years ago, they sold the barn for timber. A few weeks ago, they knocked the house down along with all its history. 
It wasn't the first to be demolished and most certainly will not be the last. This could have been the fate of the farmhouse in James Memorial Park had it not been for the determination and support of our members, township administration, residents, and local businesses, this farmstead might well have passed into history, never to tell a rich story of the people who resided within its walls. We collectively have helped save this history of the township and the people who have lived here for centuries, as well as help beautify a wonderful park that is the centerpiece of this township. When the Historical Society undertook this endeavor, the farmhouse had seen better days. It was derelict for nine years. The basement had been flooded many times, leaving most of the major systems non-functional. Inches of mud and debris on the basement floor. Window frames were rotted, windows were falling out, interior walls and ceilings were peeling and crumbling. Bathrooms were unusable. We determined very early on that we would not attempt to take the farmhouse back to its original state. First, because it was not cost effective, and second, because the house had been altered so much during its 170 year history. We would instead attempt to retain everything that remained to tell its complete story. Everything we did in this building was with the mindset of both protecting the building as well as any artifacts we would display and store within its walls. Everything in this facility was scrubbed, scraped, cleaned, repaired, replaced as we deemed necessary. Uh, next slide. So the first thing we did was we replaced the sign, we repaired the sign, and we wanted the, the township to know we were here uh, to help raise funds. Next slide. Second thing we did was bring some, and this was all in-kind donations. Second thing we did was bring some soil in to level the ground so nobody would break their ankles. And in the picture to the right, you can see in the background, we also put a fence up because we were concerned about kids getting out of the cars in the parking lot and running into Ridge Road. Um, the next slide. The next thing we did was we had an uh, outhouse donated to us by the Lifty Farm, which is on Ridge Road decades ago. So we moved it into its appropriate position on the property. Um, next slide. Uh, prior to the Historical Society committing to fix the building, the township had tried to mitigate the water problem and repair the roof. The township had previously installed an exterior perimeter drain. We took that a step further and installed an interior perimeter drain with a new sump pump with a battery backup, a moisture barrier, and a whole house dehumidifier, which would help protect both the building and any artifacts we choose to store there. And you can see the water on the right, and you can see the new dehumidifier and how it's dried up. Next. And the same thing there. There was just water coming in everywhere. And it was also coming in between the wall and the floors, which now you can see the perimeter drain and it's all dried up. And we've not had any water in the basement since. Uh, and the first thing we had to do is replace the well pump um, because we couldn't even get water in to do all that. So we also had to replace the well pump. Next picture. Um, and we also replaced the window. The window was falling out. Uh, and you can see the moisture barrier that we put on the wall because we had some moisture coming in yet. Next slide. So after we mitigated the water we then uh, determined we needed to put all new windows in because we didn't want the heat going right out the windows so we replaced 17 windows uh that were upgraded and installed uh with uv protect protection again to protect the walls from the sun and to protect the artifacts from the sun uh next picture we then and that's that's an, also a picture of us doing the windows and the gentleman also put a cap on the attic fan next picture uh, we then determined that if we were going to work in the building, we needed to do something about the restrooms. <laughs> so um, we actually had an in-kind donation from a plumber who did all the work, uh, even donated some uh, parts to us, and then we bought other things, and we fixed the bathroom so you can see what it looked like on the right and what it looks like now. Uh, next. And we then went on to the heat, had the entire heating system replaced along with all the plumbing, along with the a new oil tank. Next. And these are the pictures before and after of the inside. So this is the main room before and after the way it looks now. Next. Uh, this is also the main room. You can see how the paint was peeling. Next. Uh, this is the fireplace room or living room, which you can see the cracks actually in some places went through the wall to the exterior. And we were getting moisture and water in two different areas um, from the outside. So and you can see on the right how it's repaired now. Next. Uh, this was also the fireplace room. Next. This was the staircase. You can see how some of the walls were damaged. Uh, next. And this was the second bathroom downstairs. So before and after. And one more. And there's the final product. Um, okay, next one. This was the hallway. The, the right uh, wall we've already repaired but not painted. And uh, to, the left, to the right photo is completed. Next. Uh, this is also the wall going down the stairs, uh, which we already had repaired, and then the next photo was it painted. Next. 
Oh, I know somebody left their cat in the building. <laughs> this is now our research room. This is what it looked like before when we actually started repairing the walls. We took the walls right down to the, almost to the stone in places and had to build them back up and then uh, paint them. So this is the halfway through and then completed. Uh, same room, another photo. Next. And this is one of the other rooms. This is what it looked like after we had put the um, some of the surface stuff on to hold it in place. And then we would paint it after. Next. Uh, this is the third room, which is uh, not done on the right, not done on the left, but completed on the right. Next. So um, this is the money we spent. We raised over 80,000. We actually raised over $100,000, but we spent $80,000 already on the interior. And we had well over 200,000 volunteer uh, man hours. Um, so we just, we did the oil burner, the commercial sump pump, the whole house dehumidifier, all the floors, the carpeting, wood floor, tile floor, radiators were all replaced and fixed. Um, not, not the radiator valves were replaced, sorry. Um, road frontage nine, we did the locks, we did the security system, um, we had a run a dumpster, uh, we did all the bathrooms, and then we had renovation material as well for over $3,000. And then we had uh, donated materials, plumbing, electric wall, floor tile, uh, four upstairs bathroom, well pump, and the four for the back porch was also donated. Um, next. So our yearly maintenance, which we will all continue to do as long as we're in the building, is the security system, the air conditioner maintenance, the oil burn maintenance, the oil burn maintenance, pest control, interior perimeter drain clean out, whole house dehumidifier, and, and whatever maintenance we have to do, uh, we find things as we go. It's a house, so there will always be things we have to do to it. Next. Uh, these are just the people who gave us a lot of in-kind donations. Uh, we just have a special shout out for Fred, who um, we published a book during all of this, and he's giving all the proceeds to us, which will give us $25,000 to spend on the house. Um, and we spent no taxpayer money to do this renovation, this interior renovation. Next. Uh, the remaining work that's scheduled um, is we have to replace the remaining three windows, install the kitchen floor, install the back porch floor, which is happening next week, paint walls in the fire tower, paint the exterior doors. All the remaining work has been scheduled and will be completed by the end of this year. Next. Oh, okay, so I have one other thing I'd like to mention. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the township administration for the opportunity that they gave us to remediate this property into a Beautiful museum, by the way, uh, I, at least I believe it is, a research center and headquarters for our historical society. We also want to thank the community for the thousands of dollars in donations, the local businesses who made in-kind donations and services that made all this res restoration possible. We'd also like to thank the historical society members for their countless hours of service, scraping, plastering, sanding, and painting. Um, as we complete the work on the museum, it is now time to turn our attention to the barn. We will have a 10-year preservation plan, and our hope is to return the barn to its original state. Thank you. Very well done. All right, thank you. Brenda, just before you go, um, I will echo your your thanks to the community for their contributions, their donations, their time, their support. To the members of the Historical Society, um, and to you as the president, it's no surprise that your, your name's on that board in the back uh, for the um, volunteer plaque for outstanding volunteer, because I know that you were the primary driver for everything that happened here. And thank you very much. And actually, since I found it, no, come here. <laughs> since oh. I finally remembered it. I, oh, yes. OK, thank you. I have a present for you, which is <laughs> a, yeah, which is the brick. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I managed well, 20, uh, 1999, I was the local guide for the Bucks County Natural Areas Inventory and managed to dig up a map of the 1881 survey from the Philadelphia Water Department, which was looking at getting putting in a aqueduct from Green Lane down to Philadelphia. And in the bag is there is are what I had copies of the maps of this area from 1881. I still have to find the panel, but the map actually shows that the big uh, swampy area 
where the pond is now at James Park and then back behind the zigzag on Ridge Valley Road was a brickyard. And apparently those are locally made bricks which are found at Naceville Hotel over at Lichty's Farm, which is now Hirschberger Heritage Farm. And that's one of the bricks that was recovered when they were rebuilding what was the old Schlichter Inn, Schlichter Post Office, the uh, notary place across from Fasagio's. So we have locally made bricks, which are almost impossible to find and can't be replaced. So that's a copy of it. That's one brick and it's got the information on it and also the map that shows where, where things were in this area, 1881. Enjoy it. Brenda, I'd like to just say a, a couple words regarding what has happened there. As, as most people know, I have been very adamant about uh, the money being spent on that house over there being raised and funded by the historical society and not the taxpayers. And I've been critical at times over the years, as people know. You and the historical society have done a magnificent job and have shown a great effort in what you have done, the money you've raised and the work that you have done. And we we truly appreciate that. And when, when people and committees show how that works, the township then rallies behind you. And that house is in the park. That house is still owned by the township. And so everyone knows they get a five-year lease. Every five years, the lease has to be renewed. So if the historical society ever would decide to fall apart, break up, whatever, it would go back to the township. And it's in the park, so it would be part of the park and rec or whatever the township supervisors would decide to do at that time. However, I have watched and lived this history of this home from the time it was the police department to the time it was dilapidated and neglected for nine years to the time you go to today. So I wanna say thank you in front of everybody. Now, thank you for the great stewardship of uh, James's house. It was also on the back wall there is one of the former township uh, supervisors. All right. Good story. Yep. Well, they were actually friends. My family moved here in 48. So there were a whole bunch of old families. The Jameses were one of the older ones in the area. So Frank and Ruth did a lot and we still have a bunch of old pictures and paintings and still have one of our of her house in our house but okay we get up to committee reports which should be park and rec or uh park and rec oh, <laughs> i feel <laughs> unique over here was it standing up <laughs> um all right we got a lot of good things coming up we got september fest coming up if everybody doesn't remember it's five and a half weeks away right lots of events we have a lot of good things coming up we have um, a magician, Jake the Strong Man. We have uh, Christine and Company. Uh, that's always she, a wonderful voice. Um, we have Punk and Painting. We have uh, Silent Auction. We have little slides. You'll, you'll be able to race each other and stuff like that on the bounce. <laughs> um, we have a couple. Those are inflatables. Um, had these mini train rides. We had a photo booth. Um, we try that. We're going to have a bunch of tables out there. We have a petting zoo, um, whatnot farm. We have character artists. Um, we have Rainbow the Clown. Um, she makes all kinds of balloons in animal shapes and all kinds of cool stuff. The fire trucks are going to be here. We have pony rides, all kinds of cool stuff. You got to, you want to be here. September 29th. So it's five and a half weeks. The last Sunday in September, the 29th from 12 to 4. Um, be there. We got food trucks. Uh, it's a great day. It's our biggest event of the year. We're going to have a good year this time. Going to be sunshiny. Going to be nice weather. Um, you hope. Fingers crossed. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. Um, I can't forget to tell you. Reminder: Ferris and Fifi from the Iron Pigs are going to be there from one to three. So you got to be there if you want to get pictures with Ferris and Fifi. Phenomenal. Watch some little League World Series and all that stuff brings it all back. Yeah. I was just thinking about that actually. If I, there was going to be a race, and I wasn't quite sure. I could do that. That would actually be good. That, I, I like that idea, Brian. <laughs> um, we have a lot of donations, a lot of sponsors, a lot of great uh, people that invest. There are a lot of companies that um, allow us to have September Fest.
take place. So um, big shout out to all our sponsors, all the donations that come in. Um, uh, let's see what else. There's a few fee. Um, next on the agenda will be feature film in a fire, October 12th, only two weeks, three, two and a half weeks, two weeks later, um, Saturday night, uh, we got Transylvania 3 we got coming up. It's going to be a good night. Um, not a good weather night. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have a little fire. We're going to figure out all the details about the, the fire and, you know, maybe s'mores or something of that nature would be kind of cool or roast marshmallows or something like that. We'll have to figure out what we're going to do. Um, let's see. Got another reminder. All kinds of donations for the Little Free Library that we have across the street by the tot lot. There are any donations for the Little Free Library um, during the day, any staff members at uh, the Township Building will accept those books. Um, if you're not uh, able to go across the, and hit the park and replace or, you know, it's basically it's a take one, bring one, something like that. We want to share the books. So the idea is to make sure the library is always full. We have some, but if you have some books that you want to share, please bring them to during the day to the staff. We'll always accept the books for the little free library that we have, which has been oh man it's been a couple of years now so it's really i mean it's taken off i mean there's it, children uh children's and there's some uh, adults it depends it depends really on the week to be honest with you jody and her daughter uh, daughters um both take care of it and they frequently i mean like two three times a week to their you know bring up books and replace some books and stuff that's it's getting a lot of use so it's really great um something of um we're planning and a planning phases now of upgrading, expanding the dog park. So if you use a dog park, you'll be happy. We're looking to expand. So those we're in a planning phases right now. So we have lots of great ideas and we're talking to some good community members and, you know, get some shade and making sure we can expand it. So that way we have some options there. Um, I think that is all. Oh, don't forget this. You can see it's in the uh, newsletter. We're always there. Let's see, wait, Suzanne's in there somewhere too. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff. So there's lots of information about the parking rack, all the good stuff that we're doing. So that is all. Okay, well, thank you very much. I usually, I did want to chip in one thing which uh, sometimes goes unnoticed, that all the rides are free. Everything is free for that day, except for what you choose to purchase um, at the food trucks. Everything is free. That's why the sponsors are so important. Um, everybody that donates, it's it's a free day for everybody in the community to come and just share. That's that's our goal. That was initially our goal. Twenty, it's our 29th year, so next year will be our 30th year. So we'll have to have a big bash. Yeah, it's been a while. And it's always been great. Thank Very you. good, good report, Dave. You, Dave. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, work and rec report as presented. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I have one question here. Uh, Brenda, will the heritage house be open that day? Yes. Well, yes, we're open. Okay. Did you want this? How are you doing? Do anything wrong? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you ready for me, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Chief. Uh, All right. Warm seat for you. Warm seat. <laughs> well, not as exciting as Dave is, that's for sure. So. <laughs> Um, so I have the July activity report for the Penners Regional Police Department. In the month of July, the police department responded to 838 calls for service. Of those calls, 349 were in East Rock Hill Township, 483 were in West Rock Hill Township. The remaining six calls were assisting our neighboring agencies. The department handled 14 traffic crashes. Seven were reportable, seven were non-reportable, with five occurring in East Rock Hill and nine occurring in West Rock Hill. Our criminal activity report, we had eight crimes against property, five crimes against persons, and then we had five Group B offenses, which are your more minor, minor offenses. The reported crimes for the month of July, East Rock Hill Township had three harassment complaints and three reports of theft. West Rock Hill Township had uh, one reported hit and run crash, two assaults, one criminal mischief, two domestic assaults, two DUIs, one fraud, one auto theft, uh, a robbery, and one theft and another theft. Um, so criminal charges we filed in the month of July, four charges of simple assault, one attempted robbery of a motor vehicle, attempted receiving stolen property of a motor vehicle, harassment, four charges of that, two charges of disorderly conduct, one charge of public drunkenness, 
one charge of criminal mischief, one charge of theft by deception, one charge of defiant trespass, charge of using a fraudulent document, three theft of service charges, one violation of protection from abuse order, and four charges of DUI. Uh, our other police activities for the month of July, the police department conducted 235 traffic enforcement details, issued 135 traffic citations, issued 150 traffic warnings, we conducted 138 park checks, 54 business checks, and we attended 20 hours of training. So, so far for the year, the police department has responded to 5,174 calls for service, handled 174 traffic crashes. Uh, we have 170 reported offenses. Uh, the total criminal charges year to date filed is 296. And then um, we have officers attended or participated in 882 hours of training in the month of July. And that is your July activity report for the Pennard Regional Police Department. Okay, hey, thank you, Chief. I have a question. Yes, sir. Would you like to comment? Uh, Upper Bucks County Community College, County Community, is having a coffee with a cop? Yes, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Collingwood. Um, do you have the date there in front of you? That's why I didn't bring it up because I don't have it. I don't have the date. September seventeenth from yes. nine oh, to eleven. September seventeenth from nine to eleven uh, at the Bucks County Upper Bucks uh, Upper Bucks County campus. The uh, college had reached out, reached out to the Upper Bucks Police Department asking us to do a coffee with a cop event so that we police officers and uh, chiefs from all the neighboring police departments. At that event, if you can come out and get some free coffee and some goodies and get to talk to wonderful professional police officers. I'm not going to be there, so that's why. <laughs> kidding. I will be there, so maybe I'll do a comedy hour. <laughs> Mary, are you going to come? Okay. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Good coffee. Yeah, that'll be coffee at least. Yeah, I have no questions. I'll make a motion to approve the Chief's report as presented. I'll sec. Okay. I'll second. Well, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> okay, next item on the agenda is the Joint Breakfast Party Report. Uh, I'm chairman of the supervisors. I'm vice chairman for the park and rec. So I'm just going to give a report park from up here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, joint, uh, rec joint rec. <laughs> Putting myself to a different position. Sorry, joint rec authority, otherwise known as Holiday House Pool and Rec Center. Okay, uh, first we have a couple of announcements that coming up next week is when we shift from starting at 12 to starting at 3 since school is back in session. So the uh, Holiday House has decided that we're going to go with the twilight rates for next week, which is $10 for an adult, $8 for all day for the child, going from $3, from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. That starts next Monday. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been uh, keeping track of the attendance, and with the heat wave, we were seeing 250 to maybe 300 people per week. So we were pulling in at least about 2,000 yeah, about 2,000 people per week. No, 2,000 so, per week. Yeah, okay. so we were getting three thir we were getting two numbers up in the 250s, 300s, back and forth. So we've got like four days of 250s and three days of 330s, 350s. So we were hitting about 2,000 people a week, which was quite good. Um, we just had our first, uh, we called Flick and Float, which was essentially get in the pool and watch a movie, Moana. Uh, we had about... I guess 40, 50, 60 people over there. We ended up going through all the popcorn. Kids loved it. Parents really loved it. Worked out well. We'll see about trying to do that one again. Uh, I did have a question from one of the residents, and we're working on getting the Joint Rec Authority uh, minutes posted on the borough website, and then the township can link to that website because same way that you know some. The park and rec minutes and some of the other minutes for West Rock Hill are kind of hard to find. We had somebody asking, can they find minutes? We're working on getting those put in, put together. We also had our appreciation picnic for all of our volunteers back on Wednesday. We had a really good turnout. Uh, had a bunch of people from, we had most of, uh, half of Selzville Borough Council, a couple of the guys who were from Sellersville coming in. Uh, we're very glad to thank everybody who helped us out throughout the year because we had lots and lots of volunteers this year we had lots of people coming out so we make sure to come out thank them cook food for them make sure that everybody's uh 
doing well. Uh, we're at the end of the year, I believe it's September 2nd, Labor Day, is when we're doing the doggy dip. So that anybody who has a pup that wants to come in and swim, we're opening up the pool. The last day of the pool is all the dogs get in to swim. Uh, there's a slight charge, but we usually have a pretty good turnout for that. Uh, for the minutes, we had the fundraising. We have a couple of upcoming dine and donates for September, October, November. Uh, we've essentially done all of the maintenance projects that we had set out for this year have been accomplished. We're looking towards next year, seeing about getting some funding to put a down payment on a new pump. Right now we're running with a pump, which is knock on wood working, but this is a Franken pump that we used from taking two other ones and then putting them back together again. <clears throat> two years ago, one of our former, former board members, Mr. Dietz, ran the thing down to somebody in Pensacon at like four o'clock in the morning in order to get all of the work done and got that donated for us. So we're looking at getting a newer pump uh, unfortunately, it's a similar situation that we have with uh, West Rock Hill with our backhoe that you get to a point where we can't get parts for it anymore. So you got to update to the newer version because they don't make repair parts for this thing, which is uh, nearing the, which is now coming up on 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, we have... We're working on early purchases for tickets so that the members for the pool would be able to get a ticket and renew their membership in 2024 at the 2024 rate for 2025. Uh, we still have to, we are working on that. We have to get that passed, but that should be coming up uh, fairly quickly. Uh, we're gonna have some presence at the Gallery of the Arts. We're also looking forward to have a tent and some signups at Septemberfest. Uh, so right now we're looking at capital expenses, which were this year came up to about 50, between 52,000 to 60,000 for capital expenses, capital expenses in order to get all the updates and corrections in place. And we'll be, we have a, we have a request in to both Selzville and West Rock Hill in order to Get that funded and as everybody probably has heard we have a ballot initiative asking whether dedicated funding for the pool should be picked up by west rock hill township up to an amount which would be lower if we get west rock hill and sellers if Selzville and west rock hill both uh, jump in together uh, that's pretty much the end of the report except that i do have to I will have to talk to uh, Mr. Rice to see if we can find somebody who could put some lines up because we have an old baseball field which hasn't been striped. So if Enridge Little League has somebody who can paint some stripes and you got some old worn out bases, we can use them so we can put a sand lot up on the lower portion of the Holiday House site on the southern section off Washington Avenue it actually was graded as a baseball field years ago. Uh, we did have some other uh problems that unfortunately the storm that came through last week ended up with a tree coming down and squishing our basketball court so we're currently only having half court basketball but aside from that we weathered things pretty well uh and that's essentially all the important stuff for holiday house thank you thank you i have a couple questions how if i may yep. i had asked for um numbers reports as far as attendance mm -hmm. which we did share some of those those numbers yep. are we are we um do we have a total yet on how many season tickets were sold and and where they were where they were sold by like by town municipality uh we have a total number we're up in the 300s so we're doing better than we were last year we were hoping to get up into the 400s okay uh i don't have i had a basic breakdown we actually had about, I think, two thirds of the membership were actually outside. About half of the membership was outside West Rock Hill, maybe two thirds was outside West Rock Hill and Sellersville. And then between Sellersville and West Rock Hill, if I remember the breakdown was about two thirds, one third okay. here to Sellersville because it's walkable to. You're not quite closed yet. So if, 
if for September you could have those numbers yep. until you'll have the end of the year. The yep, end we'll get a spreadsheet together yep. with how Thank much you. we had, but so far we've you know, we had several weeks of like I said, two thousand people, two thousand people coming in per week. Uh, so that years ago, when I first you can't tell where they're from though. Do you ask them where they live when they when they buy a day pass? Day passes, no, no. We have we're employing high school kids. I realize uh, everybody. That. I realize that, but we. Well, you have a manager, right? Oh, well, we have a manager, but when you have a whole bunch, when we have this whole string of people coming, like, oh, which township do you live in? We haven't I, okay. been asking. Okay, it's not you can't do it then. Okay, well, we can't. I was just basically. We, can, asking we might be able to, but it's kind Too of hard. But okay. we're just happy to have people because right now we have a pool which is getting old. But when you come in and you look at it, because especially when we had looks great, right. yeah. When we had the appreciation night, and especially when we had the movie night, you get the floodlights on, you get the lights on in the pool. The pool looks really nice. We got it repainted this year. There are a couple sections of the deck which aren't quite level, but mm -hmm. most of the deck is better than most of the sidewalks in Sellersville, if I can, <laughs> right. if I can say that. But we're just happy to have people because right now our biggest concern is we have people coming in but when I come to the pool and look out, I see too much water and not enough people in the pool. So we have more of this as we're limited by marketing. We just need more people. Yeah. Uh, in our old paperwork in the files here, 1974, we had 890 something memberships. Yeah. The but last is, the last question I had for you regarding uh, you had just talked about you were you were investigating a new pump. Mm -hmm. Uh, on this list here, I see it says deposit on a new pump, sixty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Why would you, if you're just investigating it, why would somebody have put in a deposit to found yet? Because we're well, we're asking about getting it. However, well, the reason yeah. why I ask that is because in in the line of work that I do is, you know, at the end of the year, companies mm -hmm. that sell pumps and stuff sometimes they have leftover ones that they didn't sell. And, and if you ask them for them, sometimes you get a good deal or a donation because they don't want to hold that pump. They don't want to, they don't want to keep that inventory until next year. Yeah. Has that been done yet by anybody? Uh, yes, I believe Don, uh, our president, which is Don Kraft Emmel, is also on Southville Borough Council, has been looking into that and has been working with <laughs> our other Don who maintains a whole bunch of municipal pools to try to get the best rate. So we have been trying to cut corners and make sure that if we can get the end of the year lot that they're clearing out clearing out inventory whatever we've been trying to do we've been finding ways of cutting the price but if you put a deposit down already then you committed there basically it says sixty five hundred dollars deposit on new pump yeah for the deposit for a new pump if we can if they have one that comes in from inventory or if we don't have to get it new that's, what we're, that's okay. what we're looking at doing, but if if we can work out with them to get last year's inventory for last year's prices. Okay, thank you. That's the only other question I had. Because well, the concern is that right now the way that the prop, the way that everything is set up, uh, two years ago with uh, when Jan and Kevin were on the board, we had actually cleaned out the big sand filter. The sand filter basically takes up like would take up maybe one quarter of this room it is a huge i know the history yeah <laughs> huge sand filter we got the sand changed out and fortunately the old process sheet said we have to pump we have to backwash the filter when it gets to about 120 psi right now after getting that donation we're running at like 20 30 psi so the pump is doing a lot less work than it was than it had been doing for 20 years because nobody had really gotten into changing the sand and doing that background but the concern is the way that the pump is set up now it's actually sitting higher and the concern is if the way that it's set up that pump could run dry and if it runs dry then it burns out and then we are shut down for three weeks, four weeks so we want to make sure we have a pump I, I was just trying to understand the process so I, you you mentioned it when you gave your yep. report that you were looking into the pump, but on, on, according to the list here, it says you already put 6,500. So let's move on. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Yep. That's all. I have a question. Um, has, uh, do you know if Sellersville has done anything as far as ordering a feasibility study 
on the equipment, on the pool, on the physical parts of the pool that may fail. I mean, we did a physical study, but it was yeah. more of a marketing physical uh, feasibility study. Yeah, comparison to what other right. places. And I mean, I know it had been talked about. Have have you know if, if that's going to happen? Uh, I do not know. I'm essentially, we already have that sort of study, which unfortunately was done back in 2011, and most of that stuff hasn't been was never implemented. So at this point, I think we're looking at chewing through the stuff we have from the 2011 survey about what needed to be done. This downspout, you know, this downspout needs to be replaced. It's like, okay, it's 15, 16, you know, it's 13 years later, we finally get the downspout fixed. Right. But we have, we do have a pretty good list from the 2011 site survey and engineering of this is what you need to do. This is what have to, this is what would have to be brought up to handicapped accessible. This is what would have to be updated. Could you almost I will ask? Could you at least come back at the next meeting and let us know? Yeah. Because of, I say that because we have already discussed what we're going to do as a township with a referendum, mm -hmm. and and we'd like to know what Sellers yep. is going to do. Yep. It's, and it's a joint venture. Yep. No, and and the board has been very aware that in order to get any sort of grant funding, we have to get a essentially a facilities study of, okay, you got to fix this wall, you got to fix that plumbing, you got to fix that electric, you got to update All right. this. So that's our next step. So we're well aware of it. We're trying to find funding for it because we need to get that funding so that we can get the study in order to get grants from D DCNR, DEP, Pennsylvania in general. We can move on. Thank you. Okay. I would, I'd, I'd make a motion to, to uh, approve house um report as presented all second all those in favor aye aye abstain thank you all right okay and we move on to our tax collector and former pool manager thank you <laughs> who we asked back and went oh no oh, thank you Okay, for the month of August, uh, annual taxes, I've collected $2,537.26, uh, $8.46 in 2024 interims. So that's been my collections for West Rock Hill Townships for the July. Um, I do want to tell you that I have sent the final notices for our county and township tax bills out to all taxpayers that have not satisfied their taxes. Um, unfortunately, they are now in the penalty period. Uh, but they were mailed all. They were mailed August the eighth to all those residents. Uh, school tax bills, as you know, were mailed July the first. Um, just to give you a heads up, August thirty first is the deadline. If you want to pay in discount or if you want to pay installments, the first installment must be in my office by the thirty first of August. Um, I do have extra collection hours for the month of August for the school taxes or for any taxes. Um, Thursday the 22nd from 6 to 8, Monday the 26th from 10 to 1, and Friday, August 30th from 6 to 8. And as you know, uh, are where I do have a drop box outside the township building here that anybody can drop the payment there anytime. Um, I ask you a question regarding that. Yeah. Um, if somebody if somebody does, let's just say, because I just checked that the 31st is on a Saturday. Correct. If somebody puts the payment in your in your mailbox, oh. the check's written out for the 31st. Right. They still get the discount. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Just wanted to, I want just wanted to make sure of that because there are some people that. Oh, they'll wait for the very last. Yes. Second. No. Yes. They come by and pick them up the next day. So. Okay. You're Thank clear. you. You're welcome. Okay. And your regular hours are. Tuesdays, ten to one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll move to accept the tax collector's report. A second. Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Engineer. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the only item I have under my report tonight is the Lawn Avenue detour plan. That is a plan uh, prepared by Sellersville Borough for their project to replace the sanitary sewer line, essentially from Almont Road uh, along Lawn Avenue all the way to the bottom of the hill at, uh, I guess it's Maple Ave in the borough, or we refer to it as Cathead Road. Uh, there's three distinct areas 
of the detour uh, right at Almont Road, just uh, south or east of Almont Road. The sewer line's right in the middle of the road, so they have to close the road in its entirety. They've already had with discussions with Grandview Hospital on arrangements to use uh, a, a, a local detour of Almont Road to Lifemark Road to get into the hospital. And they also agreed to do that at night, so it won't be closed during the day. Uh, the rest of the work along Juan Avenue down past the hospital would be flaggers the best, so there would be a lane open. And then once they get down into uh, the borough, down past Noble, um, that'll be fully closed in that area. So the, the, the main sign detour um, will be to use um, back over Ridge Road to Old Bethlehem, or to Bethlehem Pike down into the borough. The truck detour will be signed to go out 563 to County Line Road and down around that way. But they acknowledge a local detour when they're working at the lower end of the borough. Cars will use farmers lane. So they're asking for the township's acknowledgement that the detour plan is satisfactory. Uh, the farmers lane will not be signed for a truck detour. Will there be signs posted? I ask you that because that's, be that's crucial. And have it. Um, PennDOT has reviewed this. They've gone back and forth a couple times and they, they've satisfied PennDOT, but PennDOT wants to know that uh, since West Rock Hill Township roads are involved, mm -hmm. you also find it acceptable. What about uh, Washington Avenue? Washington Avenue will not be signed for to be used for any. I know, but I think a lot of people will make that a detour, including right. trucks. It's possible to prevent people that have local knowledge of going right. the <laughs> other alternate routes that they will. That all they can do is sign for trucks. It's a specially signed truck detour route, and said so that'll that'll use the Ridge Road out to County Line Road. I'm not sure how many trucks really go all the way down Lawn Avenue, other than the ones going to the hospital or the, the medical complexes. Yeah, the the, uh, the, the, the um, assisted living and stuff places. You have right. you have food trucks that are tractor trailers that, that right. deliver all the well, all, all those will be able to get to okay. those facilities. That's, from, that's crucial. From the bypass. All right. Yeah, except for the few nights when they're doing the right. full closure at Almont Road. Well, I don't think they deliver like that much at night. Right, so that's not gonna impact those those deliveries to all the medical facilities. Thank you, Steve. Now this detour is for sewers, correct? For sewers. Or is this part of the major redo uh, the entire Long Avenue sidewalks and everything all the way down to the bottom of the hill? No, this is for the That's borough to do the sewer in advance of the PennDOT reconstruction. Okay, project. so this is a you borough will see project. New plans from PennDOT probably okay. asking for the similar, similar detour. Yeah, they have that. I think they had that out last year for the total rebuild or for the major rebuild of Juan Avenue coming down. But unfortunately, you're still kind of stuck because you, you know, I've seen somebody coming in. Yeah, I've actually seen somebody with a full size tractor trailer carrying a cat bulldozer with a row, row, roll on, roll off, trying to make, you know, somehow making the right turn at the bottom of Juan Avenue to get onto Cat Hill Road, Maple Avenue. And what are you doing here? How did you get? This is going to be a mess, fellas. Yeah, you know this, right? This, for this yeah. overall project, Mr. Glippincott, we're going to document the condition of Farmer's Lane right now before all this traffic starts and when we're finished. And again, I have concerns about Washington Avenue. We can document it. We can videotape it. It's, it's 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 very similar because a couple times we've had shutdowns on Ridge Road and we've had you know triaxles cutting down uh, uh, Gold Mine Road wherever they can and then trying you know, like you got a full you got somebody with a fully loaded triaxle trying to come down Ingram's Hill hit the brakes and make a left turn on Bark it's like that's not that's really not a good idea just go down to 152 so this is going to be uh, interesting. So I, I, I guess just to wrap this up, uh, the, the borough is looking for the township technology. So would you, um, I suggest that you authorize the manager to write a letter to the borough acknowledging that this is acceptable as presented. 
I'm okay with it as long as they, they uh, adhere to the uh, guidelines that you presented. That, that sounds like a good idea. So I just feel bad for the people that I go to the, the bone joint specialist down there, the eye place. I mean, it's going to be a mess. Um, one lane, but hey, this is this is life and this is infrastructure and this has to happen. Right. So we all have to have water and sewer. And that's the way it is. Yeah, the underground pipe ain't going to fix itself. Right. <laughs> Okay, then I guess I would initially entertain a motion that we authorize our manager to write a letter agreeing and moving forward on this. I think I'm going to write a letter agreeing that you should also mention that the township will be monitoring the current condition of the, yep. the roads and, and evaluating for damage afterwards. Like I think we should mention that as well. Yep. A good point. Good point. As amended. So I would make a motion to accept the engineer's report and authorize the township manager to write letters with those amendments. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I guess we'll ask the chief to. Try to pay attention and see, make sure that we don't have trucks going down the wrong road at the wrong time. Thank you. Okay, move on to the report. Hello, there's only one item on the solicitor's report this evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the last meeting, you reviewed a lot line change mm -hmm. for the Guy Hebner um, property and directed me to prepare a resolution memorializing the conditions of approval. Um, that resolution has been prepared. It's been distributed to the applicant who has written a letter agreeing to the conditions, and it is before you for your consideration this evening. So if you'd like to adopt it, you can do so by making a motion to adopt resolution number 2024-7. I'll make that motion. All those in favor? Aye. I'll second it. Aye. Aye. Oh, sorry. Aye. Yeah, resolution looks good. Thanks. Thank you. That's all I have this evening, unless you have questions for me. I have no questions. I'll make a motion to approve the solicitor report as presented. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Madam Solicitor. And get to our manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item is a request. Uh, we have a request from a resident for Tower Road and Ridge Valley Road intersection to make it a four-way stop. Ridge Valley Road is a PennDOT road, so the township just can't unilaterally do a four-way stop. You actually have to do a study uh, for a four-way stop. I contacted uh, Bowman, uh, our traffic engineer. They gave a quote of 3,500 with uh, an extra 500 for mileage and uh, motion vision data processing uh, to do the study. Um, they are unsure if it will meet the warrants. And our township engineer is position on the tower road stop sign or the well i i agree with what the traffic consultant said i find that it's marginal um the warrants for a four-way stop sign but without the study you couldn't say that definitively um i had the chief pull the accident reports there was one accident there in the last four years most of the accidents on ridge valley are with uh cars getting off into the ditches So we're saying that because of insufficient traffic volumes, it's probably not something that they're going to recommend. Correct? Correct. Correct. Discussion? I feel the same way. I don't think I think this to spend this kind of money when when it's probably not going to be warranted. Who knows? But as Greg just related to, there's been one accident there in, in how long? And uh, most of the problems are cars going off the road. Considering where it is, 
my my position is um, I don't think that a four way stop sign is a good idea. But that's only me. There are three supervisors here. I will agree with you. Yeah, I think the last yeah the last up when you're going down Ridge Valley Road, normally that's actually one of the sections which is straightest and has the best sight lines. Uh, I think I mentioned a while ago, last time and you know, back in January, February, I was going to. I saw the uh, post lady coming on Ridge Valley Road. I was going to ask her what the roads were like and notice that she was off in, in a ditch and then being hauled out by a uh, wrecker. It's like, okay, well, I don't need to ask what the roads are like because the post lady's in the ditch, but that section is probably easier to drive and most of them has better sight lines. I will add, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, if any of you have been down Ridge Valley lately, they have added a whole lot of signs. There's been a whole lot of signage added after this yeah. request has been made, which we've been trying. As, as you know, I asked Greg to reach out to PennDOT about putting ballast on the shoulders where the cars are going off and you see the groove marks in the blacktop down past the game lands is a prime example there where right. vehicles go off a lot where there where the waters land. Um, it's, it's people driving too fast for the road. That's one of the issues. Um, but of course, we all have to look twice before we pull out. But I, I will share with you, because I've experienced it myself, pulling out from Forest Road onto um, Ridge Valley Road. People do drive too fast. They come flying around that corner there, and they're on you at Forest Road before you even know it. You could be halfway out, and there wasn't a car there when you pulled out. But by the time you get halfway in the intersection, there's a car come flying around that, that curve. So just my... And we talked about this at the last meeting. Um, there's white signs and there's yellow signs, and yes. some are the legal speed limit, and some yellow are signs are recommended. Okay. And I can tell you, they just white striped the sides of uh, Ridge Valley Road just last week, or yeah, this week, last week, and they put about 50, 60, 70 new curve signs from one end to the other. So they did spend money on the road yeah. because that striping, as we all know, is costly for us to put one line on. Thousand acre, wasn't it thirty five hundred dollars a thousand acre road? Like time? So, wasn't it? More than I that. don't remember. It, it, it was a lot of money. Yeah. It so, so when you do stripe the size of the roads, that is money. That's the, so the PennDOT did invest some money and put and do some things for us. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the scary thing is that is when you drive down the road after they've just striped the road, and you see how many people have now gotten off the road into the wet paint on the right side, and you can see that they are nowhere near the shoulder. They're crossing over the center line. Same thing. You see the double yellow lines. They repaint them. I see it on Ridge Road. Also on Ridge Valley Road, they paint the double yellow line, and you see a lot of people who are way over that double yellow line coming through the curves. Uh, I think, given the you know, my position would be that, given that it was just restriped and re-signed, wait, revisit this in a couple of months. And see if the stuff that was done now helps to fix the problem with security. So, okay. Uh, the next item is um, there is a quote uh, for the Heritage House. Uh, at last month's meeting, you authorized to go out to bid. Um, we found a co-stars um, vendor um, in the township. Uh, DeGrucci Masonry, um, located off of State Road, is a CoStars vendor, um, which you can use. The quote came in at $65,674.79. That is for the entire house. Redo it. And if I am I correct, that, that is a quote that was on the table like three years ago and he sold the price <clears throat> at that amount I, is my understanding that the historical because of infl inflation or anything got a quote years ago and it's the same it's it's the same price however i had to go out and quote for the township okay. stars and it matched the same prices the one previous all the documentation for the co-stars uh his insurance information is all in the board's packet if the board so chooses, and authorize. 
Well, I know we talked about this. Uh, we're getting a little ahead of, of old business and the American Rescue Plan, but the, at the last month we talked about this particular effort, this Heritage House, James House quote, being part of the ARP funding process. You did. You did. Yes. Yeah. And as of, as of last month, you remember me saying that uh, the house is the townships. It's yep. our responsibility to maintain the outside structure and durability of the house and that I would support this kind of effort to do this. Um, the Historical Society has done the inside, taken care of it very well and has raised many of funds. Uh, I, I think that this is something we have to do in order to, to keep the house because the St the stucco on the outside crumbling away like that is only going to eat the foundation away, the stone from the inside. Therefore, the longer we wait, the more money it could cost down the road. And one thing is certain, the township will own the house down the road. Yep, and I am glad to see that the quote is for a historically, I guess, accurate and masonry accurate lime sand mix instead of Portland cement. Having repointed an old farmhouse that was partially done in Portland cement, it rips the face off the stone before it will pull off the stone. So this is hopefully going to allow the, this, well, the idea is that you put on sand and lime so that the stone breathes and you don't end up trapping water inside the stone where it freezes then it falls and it breaks the stone off and i see we have a question i will recognize mr rice question for that um sixty five thousand dollars will they strip it down to the stone and then rebuild it back up to the plaster or will they just patch and cover i was making that trade before yeah no. uh quote says chis includes chiseling out cement patches on the foundation cement so basically chiseling out the cement and then doing three coats one first coat second coat third coat to build up so that the lime has a chance to dry because if it if nobody else uh, if nobody has done masonry when you put you have a scratch coat then you have another coat then you have another coat and unfortunately around here if you put portland cement on if you have red shale blue shale Portland cement is stronger than the stone. So what happens is this the Portland cement will actually trap water and then break the stone off because the stone because Portland cement is actually bound to the stone. This Portland is stronger than the stone. Uh, unless you got the black and white diabase from up in the boulders, that's the only thing that will survive that. And eventually the house will start tearing it or the frost the freeze thaw will start tearing the stones apart and will start tearing the patches off of stone and then cover everything so that it's uniform the country has done notre dame he's done saint paul's cathedral he's worked in thomas jefferson's place in virginia so he yeah. he's historically minded he'll do a, he'll do a good job he'll take it down to take all the flaking off anything that's loose anything that might come loose, he'll make sure it's firm before he starts his three coat process. Yeah. I, I'm I'm confident with his I know that I know the man's work. Yeah. I'm confident with the with the way he'll do it. It'll be done right. <clears throat> the the matter is 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 um the longer we wait, I think it's something that has to be done and we can do this. We can use the we can use some of the ARP money on this. Is that we right? can use the ARP money. Yeah. This was completely funded by ARP money. So so this will this will preserve the house in the park. That really we're not going to be it's not going to be costing we're not going to be taking money out of our tax base correct yes you need a motion for that mr yes i do yep oh, and do we want to make individual motions or one big motion one big motion okay <laughs> then we get to the next one snow plowing oh i thought separate. i i do them separate yeah yeah. Okay. yeah well then i guess they should back up and say for the the verb. I'd move to table the concern about Tower Road and Ridge Valley Road. Uh, given the recent updates and repainting of Tower Road, 
I'll make that as a motion. You're tabling it. Yeah. Okay. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I've been getting up to the Heritage House. I would move that we accept the co-stars, the bid from the co-stars qualified Mason in the township at the price quoted. All and using ARP funds. and using ARP funds, since this is a capital improvement which should last quite a long time. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And now to plowing. Plowing. Uh, we put the snow plowing uh, out to bid. Uh, we received two uh, bids uh, from Tony Services and Affluent Retrieval. Um, they are, they've been plowing our road for the last couple of years. I would make a motion that you accept both bids for snow plowing services. Okay, I will make a motion that we accept both bids for snow plowing. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's all I have. Do you know if either of those guys also do uh, plowing for PennDOT? They do not. Okay. Because I know last year, one of the PennDOT plow contractors set a personal record by taking my Christmas ornaments right off of the front fence and setting them up to the top of... If you get the... If you see who the contractor is, I can resolve that. Yeah, well, I couldn't see who it was because the entire front of the house was covered in slush. Mm -hmm. And my Christmas decorations ended up on the roof. But, but otherwise, actually, the guys who we had doing the uh, brush cutting did a pretty good job. Yeah. Okay, moving forward, we have old business. I'd like to make a motion to accept the manager's Sorry. report uh, as presented. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we get to old business and ARP fund. I'd like to make a suggestion. I'd like to talk about this. We we it's now on our our agenda, and we have until the end of December to obligate the funds 24 and we have until the end of december 26 to actually spend them and um we talked about this i guess back in la last october in a, in a public meeting and and we we kind of started to chip away at, at a at a list at a list that was made available by various groups in the township who were looking to possibly funded by uh, ARP, we uh, last month took care of Old Mill Road. Um, tonight we've talked about and approved um, work on the James House, Heritage House. And we can continue to, to chip away because we've had the fire companies come to us. We've had the police department come to us. Um, we've had ambulance associations come to us. We've had the Penridge Senior Center come to us, and my feeling is if we look at these and we start to chip away at them now, September, October, November, December, we can figure out how we're going to not lose but use this money for the good of the community. And I would like to have us consider the Senior Center this evening as um, the next recipient of money from this fund. I'll just open it up for discussion. Well, I feel that it should, it, you know, the senior center is, or, or I'm not going to call it the senior center, okay? It's the community <laughs> center because there are people that use it that are Right, that's seniors. fair. That's fair. So that's, that's fair. what it should be called. Uh, however, that 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 is an entity that we normally have given money to every year, and I think that it is warranted to, to contribute some of these funds to that because, you know, since COVID, things have, have they haven't had the attendance and been able to do things that they do. So I do think that we should give some money towards that. How much money? You know, that's up for debate and discussion here, of course. Um, as as I said, we normally give twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred, right. I was thinking ten thousand dollars. Okay. That's me. Um there's three of us up here that have to discuss this and agree to it. That's not out of line. That's that seems like a fair how what do you think? Uh I think that is in line. I will make the, I guess, 
not necessary disclosure that my mom is on the board of the Penridge Senior Center. So I hear about when are you going to give us some money every time? Make your life easier. <laughs> I used to hear that request every year, Al. At every park and rec committee meeting, okay? <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, I I know. I still hear that every couple of every time there's a every time there's a senior center meeting. What when are we going to get some funding from this for the community? Uh, but we put that out there. Uh, you know, they're all volunteer positions. No, all the money that goes towards the senior center ends up going towards programming. Nobody. They're all volunteers. They're all unpaid. But so what do we have to do? What do we have to do in order to? To, to, we would say I would make a motion say, to okay. um, agree that we would allocate ten thousand dollars to the Penridge Community Center um, from using American Rescue funds. Okay, and and that is a motion I would making tonight. Okay, um, I'll second it. Well, we have public discussion or Go ahead. public question. Quick question: How much? After this, we would have around two hundred thousand. That is not going to be useful. <laughs> you can use uh, American Rescue Fund money for just about every anything. <laughs> that's that's <clears throat> one of the things. Yeah, it wasn't. It was initially uh, essentially to make up for deficits based off of COVID, but then the abilities have expanded. Oh, I thought you meant everybody in the room. All those in the audience want to share the money, raise your hand. I think that's what they're... We're trying to do that. We are we are trying to do it, but some things cost more money. Like like uh, you know, my passion is roads. If I had if I had my if I had my if I had my choice, we'd be paving more roads. And if Hal had his choice, he'd he'd won all the money for the Holiday House pool. So we, we're working through this. We're working through this. And and uh, as you you know, we did put a list together. I think I think a year or two years ago, right. I I did mention the fire companies. Right. Um. Yep. And the police department. Yep. They, and and so there is there is some requests for all for all that stuff. Um, how much? Whatever. I did have a question. I don't know if you want to get into it. Or are, are, are you? No, it's okay. There's there's a motion on the floor. We're having some discussion. And I and I, yeah. and I seconded the motion. Right. Or are yes. you done with your with your thing now? Yep. Well, we had we just recognized a question from the audience. Yep. Oh, we got one from Tony. I got, I got one other quick one. One of the um, managers report. ARP fund, I thought it said 530,000. There's money that's been allocated. Old Original Mill has not. 530, but Old Mill Road was 265,000. And it hasn't been paved yet, so we haven't spent the money. It's been allocated, but the money hasn't been spent. So, let's just say that Old Mill Road was 260,000. Old Mill. Old Mill, don't. 65. Yeah, yeah, old mill. Oh, 265. Sorry. I'm sorry. 65 was 65. Old Mill. Heritage House was 65. 65 and change. And, and 65, 6. If, um, if you're going to tell them the numbers, David, make sure they're at, I think, writing them down. Heritage House was $65,674.79. Old Mill was $264,925. Okay, and then another 10 for the community center. Correct. Correct. There's a motion on the floor for That's, that. Oh, sorry. Okay. Which leaves around two hundred thousand left. Okay, now, okay, now I, I, okay. Yeah, that's why the numbers came down because we have roads versus fixing the road that you can't drive down. Uh, we have another question from the floor. I'll recognize. Okay. So this money was COVID relief money. It was initially banded, uh, branded as COVID relief money, and then the permissions on what you could use it for were expanded to capital projects, projects, uh, even up to some townships have just put it into their general fund to spend as they deem later on. But we have to make a decision by the end of this year 
and we actually have to spend it by the end of 2026. How is working on the road and putting money into the road a COVID issue? That's it's no longer tied to co anything related to okay, COVID. Well, that's what I'm it's like just the agency's funds, so it would be nice to help out things that were struggling during COVID, like the fire department. We know was struggling during COVID because you know they weren't getting money and stuff like that. So you know, like any kind of businesses and stuff that were struggling. Because we have a list. We have a list has been generated. We've been looking at it now. Yeah, this is what we're working on. We're working on it. Yeah, the 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 number of places that you can spend the money has widened as time has gone on and so it's kind of like when you were a little kid and drove with a full station wagon of kids over to dairy queen and everybody wants something so we're in that process of okay trying to order who's going to get what for where for what so we are listening to everybody and we're trying to figure out and trying to prioritize okay what are the things that are most important, what are going to have the most effect, and how do we make the best use of it? Has anybody made a motion to help Holiday House at all whatsoever? Uh, actually, did I just I had mentioned that as one of the ideas that we have that capital request for Holiday House, which we'll put into the mix with all of the other locations, which are all the other organizations and groups that we're looking at. Could we use that for the feasibility study that you guys want? No. Nope. We already did a feasibility study with from West Rock Hill. I thought you still wanted what study we asked we asked Sellersville. Sellersville was gonna do one. Sellersville is a different entity, different municipality. Okay? They're they're a partner. What's the study you want from Sellersville? We 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 don't know. What they they said something about doing a study, is that correct? Right. The per yeah, the <clears throat> Sellers will borrow. Back in 2011, we had a facilities study that was done. We did a marketing study, and then Sellersville and the Joint Rec Authority had previously discussed going through to get a essentially implementation study, which is what's required to go to DEP, DCNR to get to yeah. Basically, DCNR will not give you funding or grants unless you have a certain style of study that meets their checkboxes. That's what we are. That's what uh, would be the next step for the Joint Rec Authority for Holiday House is get this sort of study so that you're then, el then eligible for community block development grants and DCNR grants. Okay. I think we had one. But for discussion Hold on. Purposes. We're still. <laughs> we have one more. Okay. Uh, is this this is capital funding, right? Uh, capital to mean something that is a permanent improvement. No, it's like not. It's, no, that, that's a no. You're, it's not just for capital and fund. It can be used. It can be used to give um, Greg a bonus. Okay. It can be used. For <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 easier to say what it can't be used for. <laughs> So it's not just a capital program. Bigger Jeep tires. Okay. No other questions. We have a motion on the floor. I'll call the motion for 10,000 to be allocated to the Penridge Community Center. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. And we get to new business. Well, I had a I had a, a question. Um, is it is it appropriate, Mary, for me to ask the question to you about the um, what I was thinking about the uh, fire company? That that's up to the three of you. Okay. Is it, it would it be this this has to to do with the yep. ARP money and mm -hmm. my my thought and my my idea of the fire companies? Is it is it appropriate to discuss it now? 
while we're while we're fresh. I think I'm so. Not, I'm not prepared to or saying we need to make any take any. I take think any we should discuss tonight. it. No, I think we should discuss it. But I would like to. I'd like to at least present my thought. No, on, I think on, it's a good idea. Because if you look at through the minutes or whatever back, I, I don't know. It's been a year, over a year, that I made a suggestion about funding, giving some of this funding to the fire companies. A lot of people have forgot that and accuse us of not. We give a lot of money to the fire companies, but we do understand the situation. Now, there's something that I have that I have thought about during this process because of of what has happened. The funding that I would like to see go to fire companies, I would like it to be allocated to a certain purpose. And the thing that the fire companies are in desperate need of is volunteers. I would like the money to be tied to training and to personnel, is if that if that can be done. And that, that was a legal question for you, Mary, that I would like to discuss here tonight. So the money has to be allocated, and that doesn't mean just like making a motion at a meeting. That means there has to be a contract that has to be firmly committed before the end of this year. So if you wanted to do a program like that, which is an acceptable program, you could create a fund Good. Um, and fund it by the end of the year with guidelines, rules and regulations for um, how that money would be released and distributed. And the things that you mentioned to me is that you would like to see it not only be used for um, programs to help recruit firemen, but also to help pay for their training, yes. which is becoming more and more expensive and more and more time consuming. Yes. And once they met that criteria, then we would give them money, not to be spent on equipment, I'm up for the sole yes. purpose. This is this was just an idea thrown out there to try to try to generate more volunteers and to accommodate them for their time and efforts of training, uh, going to training, so forth. You know that they have to drive what to an hour away to tra some training sites. Sometimes this all takes time and money and effort. So I would like the money that we, if we would to give money to the fire companies, set I would up a like fund to, to be set up in a fund way that that would be something that could be done and that and training and is a, something a broad board. picture training is can be very broad and, it, and um that's something that if the board is interested in it would be helpful to know as soon as possible because setting up that fund and establishing those guidelines is not something that's going to take 30 days we, greg and i have to work on them we have to talk to the fire company get their input and um bring it back to you for actually approving the document so if that's something you're interested in, tonight's a very good night to start that. Ball. I think we should give Mary that direction tonight because we only have four months left. Yeah. Okay. No, I agree. That's one of the things which is what 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 occurs to me is that one, it's helping out with uh, finding new members, getting training, and also if we can find a way of getting of using that for seed money for fundraising so that. You can take the money and then you've got new people who are out there doing fundraising because that's always been the biggest hurdle for most of the fire departments is getting the fundraising because you end up with you know, 80 20 80 you know, 20 percent of the people end up doing 80 percent of the work the more people you get so i would i would like to make a motion to direct mary on to figure out how to set up a uh, the, the guidelines of the funding not, we're not going to determine the dollar amount tonight, but we're going to determine the guidelines of. Yeah, to to, to um, do the framework for, right. for that kind of program. Yep. The Investigate the issue. Necessary. Um, come up with some kind of. Maybe come back to guidelines. us next month with some yeah. some direction. And either you or Greg. Greg, Greg and I. And Greg and I can sure. can meet with the fire the chiefs, the fire companies, whatever. Yeah. Whoever 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 they want to use as a representative. Mm -hmm. Good. We got a good guy right there. Yes. Yep. When is our next fire com fire commission meeting? October. October. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I made that motion. Motion's on the floor. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you, Jay. I yeah. have no other. I have no new business. I have no new business other no. than that. Okay, that brings us up to public comment. If anybody has any public comment on. Yes, uh, and if you, we can't they're not going to hear you so unfortunately you have to, 
No, people can hear you here, Harry, but they can't hear you at home. The people that complain that say, oh, I can't hear them. That, that's why they can't hear you because it's not the people in the room. We all can hear you. It's the people that are watching that video right there. Thank you. <laughs> this goes back up and people are awake at 3 o'clock in the morning looking for something to put them to sleep. They're going to be able to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank uh, David Collingswood and Steve, the Township Engineer, for taking time and coming out and looking at Thousand Acre Road, the uh, issues that I have showed to them. And uh, I, I appreciate that. And some of my other neighbors I talked to also said they appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, also, I guess would uh, like to thank the township crew. Uh, they cleaned out the drain, cross drain on the state game lands. Uh, they did a very good job. I know it's the homeowner's responsibility to keep the drains open. Uh, I don't know why uh, the township don't keep after uh, the game commission. To, it's a, it's a, been a problem for quite a few years. I've cleaned it out. Jim Carter's cleaned it out. You know, it's got to the point where, you know, it, uh, it, it gets old. Can I ask you for a, um, just a notification to Greg whenever you see that it's blocked? Just call Greg or send him an email or something. Say the, the, the inlet's blocked on the game on the property or something okay and then that way we'll know and, and he can take action send a letter okay. and um another issue uh which i'm sure you all would favor the halfway house that we came in on thousand acre road we have these women walking up and down soliciting stopping cars wanting money want me to take me to atlantic city take me in town so i can get cigarettes uh my wife has called the, the police uh, I don't know what has happened. One of our neighbors has wrote a letter to the company that bought the house and has the halfway house, the people there. And uh, they said that uh, they ha they are under supervision 24 hours a day. Well, if they're under supervision, why are they left out walking up and down the road? And my wife got they got uh she got stopped at the end of thousand acre and allentown road there was a lady standing there wanted my wife to take her in in town to get cigarettes or whatever whatever it was uh to, it, somebody's going to get hurt people fly up and down and i agree with mr kaiser people speed in west rock hill township they do i mean and I don't know if the police can do any kind of speed traps or I, I don't know. I think that's an issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, I, I see it on all, all different roads. Two and a half minutes are up. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Harry. Yeah. Okay, we have one person for public comment. Anybody else? Nope. And I forgot to ask Harry, but we know Harry, but if you can say your name and um, Shelly McLeff, uh, Simmons Road, Fellersville. I just have a question. Uh, we found somebody that's willing to do the um, tennis courts by the Holiday House pool. I was wondering if anybody, if you had brought it up and we needed somebody to approve that work. Troy said he was going to start working on that. that He's just waiting for you guys to approve it. Well, that, actually, that would be the joint rec authority. Okay. Because so, uh, the Holiday House Pool is actually run by a separate legal entity, the West Rock Hill Sellersville Joint Recreation Authority. Um, so you could take care of that. Yeah, He's so waiting take, for you then to meet with them. Yep. And that's something that uh, can be done by executive session or that can be done through the Joint Rec Authority. Although we, okay. I'm sure that we would write a letter thanking Troy if we have somebody else. Uh, for background, Holiday House Pool has two full-size tennis courts, which are in poor condition, haven't been used for probably about the last six, seven, eight years. More not longer than that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, they became the de facto Sellersville Skate Park, and we are now looking to work with uh, anybody who's interested in helping to donate or interested in using them either as tennis courts, 
pickleball courts. So we have a couple of volunteers and we have a bunch of people who are interested. So if anybody has uh, ties with anybody who does paving, striping, marking, we have a couple of volunteers who have small businesses who are interested in helping uh, rehabilitate the tennis courts into pickleball courts so that we can add some additional uh, nine, you know, three months out of the year uh, use to Holiday House, uh, not just pool, but Holiday House Recreation Center. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions going once? Twice, all right. Seeing no other requests for public comment. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you everyone for coming out. Yeah. Thank you, people. Thanks for it. The North Penn Water coming down river. Eventually, yeah. yeah.